Two Broke Rednecks present. Oh, I love their books. Or how to make a fool out of yourself in front of the person you're attracted to. Screw it, I'm too short. ...is about to confront the students of Lincoln School. The teen club is organizing a house, a new kind of party. A Gee, things are happening. Oh, and look, a real party for a change. Dang, Unlike those god-awful fake parties you throw, Marge. Well, how do you know somebody isn't going to ask to take? Oh, do you think somebody might? Oh, golly, I'd be scared to death. Maybe we better go together, Cindy. Then afterwards, we can laz out. How about it? You and your date. Who you gonna ask? Me? I don't like parties. Unless they're strippers. I am not. Hi, boys. Hi, Hi coach. coach. What's the big argument? Oh, Bill's kidding, George. He says he's scared to ask a girl to the winter party. You scared to make a date, George? That's downright un-American, comrade. Maybe you haven't, but you'll be wanting to someday. Look at it this way. Remember the first time you ever dived? Remember now just you spread just your cheeks and relax. But you did. After that, it was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. But I almost drowned. Diving goals. But gosh, dating's different. Sure, but you want to date someday, George. It's easier here, where you know everyone so well. Later on, later on, it may be harder. Like taking your first plunge from the high dive. And if you need more diving metaphors, I'll be here all week. Social swim is a lot easier than it seems. It's just a matter of following a few very simple rules of etiquette. A matter, too, of having a little courage. After a morning of thinking it over, George decides to take the plunge. By knocking the shit out of some poor girl. Larry. Hiya, Mildred. Hi. How'd you like Skip Davis's poster? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, pretty good. If you're into Satan. Maybe with the floor show and all. Yeah, sure will. Would you like to go? Huh? I mean, would you like to go to the party? You mean with you? But well, you're short. I so. That'd be okay. Sure. I'll have to ask at home, of course. Okay, I'll check with you at school tomorrow. Fine. Bye. Bye. Strike one! George did make the date. Awkward, maybe, but the date is made. Here's Bill ready to make the plunge. Let's see how well he does it. Now, what was the school slut's number? Hello? Hi, Helen. What are you doing Friday night? Yes? No, I don't yes. have Prince Albert in a can. Who is this? Why, it's Bill. Bill Jenkins. Oh, Bill. Well, hello. I was just wondering if you're busy Friday night. Friday night? Why, um... Why... No, Bill didn't do very well. First mistake, to think that everybody recognizes his voice. Second mistake, is it fair to extend an invitation without telling what it's all about? Third mistake, calling a stuck-up bitch Bill to start with. That he did it the wrong way. Let's give him another chance. Hello? Hi, Helen. It's Bill Jenkins. I told you before, we don't have Prince Albert in a can. Now stop calling. Hey, the team club's giving a party in the community house Friday night. Would you like to go? Why would I want to go to a party? Hey, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Did you know whether or not Barbara's going? I, I suppose so. Hold it. This is getting embarrassing for both of them. They don't know how to stop. Dude, run! The rule here is that the girl declines or accepts an invitation briefly and then says goodbye. If Helen had been older, she might have handled the telephone conversation something like this. Hello? For the last time, no, we don't have Prince Albert in a can. Hey, the teen club's giving a party at the community house Friday night. Would you like to go with me? Oh, yes, thanks. That sounds like a lot of fun. The party starts at 7.30. I'll call for you about 10 after. Fine, Bill. I'll be looking forward to it. Bye. Now what to wear to a party? Well, here it is, the dance night.
Bill is well groomed. That's the first step. Second step is making sure he has plenty of rubbers. His next problem is what to say when he gets to Helen's door. Bill wonders who's going to open the door. How do you do? I'm Bill Jenkins. I've come Get the hell out of here, you little punk. Nice start. Expecting you. Now let's do it again and suppose that Helen had opened the door. Hi, Helen. Gee, you look nice. Now I'd have to fling dog poo at you. Come on in. That was unnatural. Any honest compliment is tops in date etiquette. Bill, this is my mother. She's a fairy. The rule here is the younger person is always presented to the older person. Try it again, Helen. Mother, this is my friend, Bill Jenkins. Hello, Bill. How you doing? Father, this is Bill Jenkins. He caddies at the municipal golf course. Maybe you've seen him there sometimes. Are you the little shit who lost my nine iron? And Helen, by mentioning Bill's job, has started a lively conversation. But not every boy is as lucky as Bill. Let's see how his friend Dwight is making out. Dwight here is obviously on the spot. No one is being helpful. What do you talk about in a situation like this, he wonders. Well, how you're going to tap that ass is out of the question. The only thing on his mind right now is the party he's going to. Why and containing his bladder. The party. Uh, the party's going to be fine tonight. There's going to be a floor show. A couple of eighth grade kids are going to get some invitations. Who are you, boy, and who the hell lets you in? Found a good topic for conversation. You may wonder what to talk about all evening on a date. But the secret of easy conversation is getting off to a good start. So avoid talking about her tits. My, did Mother and I have a time at the hairdressers today? Oh, it was so funny. And do you think this is a good start? Hardly. What does Dwight know about hairdressing problems? A lot, just to watch the closet case. That's a good way of selecting subjects for conversation. George is thinking about them beforehand. George has chosen a good topic. It seems that Mildred enjoys telling about her new puppy. And how much it poops. Here they are at the party. Looks more like a coat check stand. Bill is right on hand to wait for Helen. But poor Joan. Her date, Tom, has committed the unforgivable error of leaving his partner stranded. Tom won't get none tonight. One of the secrets of having a good time at a party lies in trying to see that others have a good time. By spreading salacious gossip. But it's certainly reasonable and fun to relax for a while and just stand around. Nevertheless, all boy huddles and all girl huddles carried on too long can get to be a bore. Unless you're into that sort of thing, if you know what I mean. Wide dance floor, and asking a girl to dance can seem frightening. But then so did that first dive. Here's an opportunity for Pete and Morris to break up this deadlock, to make the party fun. It's also a chance for them to add to their skill in friendly relations. For party skill, like diving skill, is gained by just one thing by practice and more practice. Dad, can I be late for dinner? I got party practice. An efficient committee helps to make a party a success by thinking of those who are interested in other things than dancing. Like smoking weed. These kids are so easy to entertain if pulling a rag out of a box excites them. Damn kids in their shitty dancing. Is the punch spiked? No. Good thing I brought my own. Always part of the etiquette of dating is the problem of getting home on time. This is Screw that, I never want to go home. Girls alike. Oh, gosh, I better be thinking about my deadline, George. You know parents. I have to be home by 10.15 or else. Yes, we'd have to leave right now if we want to make your house walking. But I made a deal with Bill's dad for a ride. 
In exchange, he gets your panties. Thanks for the panties, George. Bye. George sees Mildred right to her door. Then tries to play Ding Dong Ditch. Mildred remembers to express her appreciation. Gosh, thanks a lot, George. I had a wonderful time. Okay, I enjoyed very much, too. See you in school. Okay, good night. Good night. And George remembers to wait until she's safely inside. He is then so mauled George's by wolves. The first plunge into the social swim comes to a successful end. It wasn't too difficult. All it required was a little courage and following a few simple rules of etiquette. Rules which are based on just one thing. Consideration for the feelings of others. Screw others! What about my needs? Politeness comes naturally when we are considerate. Lack of consideration can spoil our partner's good time. Planning things in advance can be a wise move, too, whether it has to do with what to talk about or when to go home. Or where to hide the body. These simple rules, all dating can be fun. Well, that sucked. Jay Park Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.